Hold on. Ooh. All right. Let's get the <laughs> links going. Let's fire everything up on social media. <laughs> Allie's going to make sure it's actually going. So click on that streaming tab. There it is. All right. Now don't click on it. Go to the other tab I showed you. There you go. Just chill there. It's not there yet. It's there. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> the this is our hundredth episode. Yeah, this Did is you know the hundredth oh one. Yeah, I'm, I'm honored. Where are, the, where are the hats? Where are the ha- I have them, but I only had two. They're right there. We have Santa hats, but we're gonna do a Christmas themed live stream. This isn't that one. <laughs> okay. I, I, so, I, thought, I thought you were gonna say they're Shill Brothers hats. I was like, oh. I will have those too. Well, that's amazing. <laughs> we gotta get him some merch. <laughs> um, <laughs> welcome, welcome back, everybody. Hundredth episode special. We've been talking about this one for a while, so. A little over a year ago, actually, I looked at the date. Um, our buddy John, who has his own podcast, and the link is down in the description. And check that out. Is your podcast? It's specific to UFOs, correct? Uh, not just UFOs. Oh, okay. We it's do all, all sorts of mysteries. So true crime, uh, UFOs, ghosts. All okay. Sorts of okay. Weird ghosts. Stuff. Okay. Yeah. We we did a we did one. Um, it's fr- from the edge. Wait, what's the name of it? Uh, from the void. From the void. From yeah, the we edge. did we did one. Um, a couple weeks ago, that was based on. I interviewed a local historian actually from Columbus who talked about all the local oh, really? places in Columbus. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. So. Oh, I, know. I want to talk about that. But yeah, uh, Camden, she's great. Is there haunted stuff, like legit haunted stuff in Columbus? Oh, yeah. We've got so, like, there's a lot of Civil War history. Here. Okay. And so, a lot of uh, the areas around German Village specifically, um, there's a lot of like old structures down there and a lot of places that still. Some of the German village houses in the basement still have like jail cells. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, Wait, like people's keep, houses? The in Wait, there? Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so keep the ghosts locked up. <laughs> yeah, there's some. I there's sent some, you the uh, link. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Th- yeah, there's some. Uh, there's some uh, public places that you can tour that are on the historic registry that weird things have happened when people have been on tour allegedly. Oh, so you hear the mic? Yeah, your mic just got way better. Hey, there we go. Oh, that was interesting. So we're gonna we're gonna continue on with our UFO conversation we started about a year and a half ago because a lot of things have happened. Stuff, stuff's getting weird. Also, we don't have Sam to Google stuff for us, but we do have my wife. <laughs> she wouldn't let me put a camera on her. You can say hi. Hello. <laughs> Sound good. Thanks. Is chat enabled? Chat should be enabled. Chat, yeah, chat's people on. are talking. Oh, man. People are talking. So if there's any that. comments or anything. Uh, Allie will will address them, but oh, her her main job is to uh, pull stuff up for us. Perfect, because cool cool things. So, um, also one last little shout out. We got a shout out Terry, oh, for, yeah. for uh, making us these sick laser etched coasters. After watching us deal with the ones I stole from Disney World for <laughs> two a year and a half, so these are legit. Thank you, sir. He also made the sign there, and. Uh-huh. Um, Hey, these are sweet. Yeah. Shout out to your awesome. infused bourbon. Yeah. Before we get started, I, I finally and shout out to my buddy I work with, Kyle, who told me how to do it. Any more shout outs? Yeah, we could do shout outs. <laughs> so he, uh, have you ever done this? Because you're a bourbon guy. Yeah, I, I did. We did one uh, like five or six years ago. We did one for uh, around Christmas. Mm-hmm. And threw the cinnamon sticks in it. And, and okay, so you've done it. it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I've really never done good. it before. I did I did one honey crisp apple and a half a twig of cinnamon for like 15 days. And then filtered it out, and it's good. It's yeah, really it's good. good. It's you know, it's Christmassy. It's Christmassy. Yeah. Well, Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Uh, okay. All right. So first, I, I. Uh oh. No, hold on. No, you got. Wait. You got me. You got me. Yeah. I'm not gonna touch the mic. Yeah. <laughs> don't touch the mic. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Things are things are going weird with the mics it's, here. It's ghosts. Okay. All right. <laughs> was this a civil war ground? I don't know. <laughs> this was the the Big Bear production facility back in the day. The supermarket production facility. You know, some people died there. <laughs> are, you familiar, oh, yeah. are you familiar with Big Bear? Uh, yeah, yeah, the grocery store. Yeah. yeah. So we're, where we're sitting right now was like the production facility for Big Bear, like this plot of land. Whoa. Yeah, and they like dug it up, and when they were like making these houses, they dug up like all sorts of weird shit that was like left over. It's a true story. Oh, I do remember you talking about that. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, all, all right. right. <laughs> so, <laughs> welcome back. Check out John's podcast. Link in the description, but let's get to it. Is that a rocket book? It is. Oh, I love these things, dude. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, I won't get distracted. I've never seen someone with one. We always use it. We use them at work. Yeah. And I've never seen a full size one. Oh yeah, I have the little one, small one, and the full size one. Okay, yeah, love it. Okay, all right. So, (laughs) 
Uh, I got first real quick. Since we last talked, which was like a year and a half ago, a lot has happened. Yeah. What c- can you go through some of like some highlights of what's happened before we like deep dive into something specific? Yeah, sure. Uh, so when we talked last time, I think right around that period of time was when things really started to, to, to hit in the media. Yeah. So there was like the New York Times article, the Washington Post article that come out. I think we talked about that on the last episode. Yeah, because that had just happened. Yeah. And, and I had just started my my other podcast. And so I, I don't think I had talked to him yet, but I was getting ready to interview one of the um, uh, one of the journalists from the New York Times. OK, that's right. So, yeah, Ralph Ralph Blumenthal, um, awesome guy, also an author. Uh, but yeah, so there were, there were a bunch of articles that came out, and uh, right around that time, kind of got buried in the news a little yeah. bit. So like, I think any other time, I think people would have probably been like, "Holy crap!" The the U.S. Navy just admitted that UFOs are real, essentially. No, nobody seemed to care. Yeah, and there are still people that are like, "Wait, what?" Yeah, <laughs> it's biz- It's like aliens exist, people, and nobody seems to care. Yeah. I always bring that up. Well, they haven't gone that far yet. They've just but said like, UFOs it, are real. <laughs> that, that, I know. That, I, you know. Yeah. Well, we'll get to that. Okay. Yeah. So sorry. Keep going. Yeah, it's funny. They've stopped just short of that. They're like, it does things that like. Our technology can't do, but it, we, we're not saying it's aliens. Well, look, who the hell is it? Right, then, you know? right, right. <laughs> it's not Russia. Stop it. Yeah, like, yeah, we know yeah, it's not clearly. Russia. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> Definitely I mean, not They're Russia. getting owned <laughs> by Mavic drones on the battlefield. <laughs> yeah. I was like, if they had that technology, they would have used it <laughs> by now. Be <laughs> yeah. That is a great point. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> So it's like, so there's all these theories, but um, all these articles had just started to come out and we started to uncover, there were some um, disclosure efforts and some uh, information came out or was released. Uh, there were some high level government officials or former government officials that had kind of come out and and sort of pushed things along a little bit. So we got some videos like the Go Fast and the Gimbal video and some of the other ones that were later confirmed to be legit Navy pilot videos. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so that kind of like kickstarted things. And so I, I think a lot of the UFO community was like, yes, disclosure's yeah. coming. And I'm like, nah. <laughs> yeah, we've seen how this goes. So like, I'm pretty excited. The fact that we've gotten this far, I, I think this is far much further than I thought that we would get, but there's no way I knew the government was going to come out and say, yeah, we're, we're talking to ET, you know? I mean, I feel like the, the stock market would just immediately crash if something <laughs> yeah. like that were to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like, they and they don't want that to happen. So, my, you know, my theory is, like, they're just, like, just going to warm us up for, like, 15 years. Yep. Because then it's, like, it won't be a, a massive, like, shock react, like, knee-jerk reaction, like, run on the banks which if, if the if the if the u.s government came out and was like hey these ufos are alien and their technology is a million times better than ours like there's going to be like a run on the banks and like stuff's going to go down so maybe they're trying to just like you know ease us into the water that's kind of my my feeling because like it's clearly aliens yeah <laughs> it's, come on i mean <laughs> it's, it's ali have you seen these videos i don't like no i don't think so the only thing i can confirm is it's not russia Right, that's the only thing I can confirm. <laughs> China's still on the on the on the table, but <laughs> Russia's clearly not. Um, when you talk to these people, mm-hmm. are are they like it's aliens? Like, do they think it's aliens, or like are they very like biased, oh, like unbiased? We, like we just we haven't identified it yet, or like <laughs> like what what are the actual people you're talking to think? Uh, it's kind of fifty fifty. So some of the people I've talked to. Um, <clears throat> are pretty convinced based on just the maneuvers and the things that these craft are able to do uh, being just light years beyond the, the, the best technology that we publicly acknowledge right now. Um, they're just like, there's just no way. Yeah. You know? And, and, and the argument is there. I think, you know, it's, it, we spend like something like six times more money in defense spending than the next six countries combined, which mm-hmm. includes Russia and China and, and, and many other uh, countries, and we just approved the budget for this year. I think it was something like eight hundred something billion dollars. Yeah, and it's like if it's not ours, then what are we what are we spending our money on? You know? Do you think it's ours? I think it's gonna be my question. Yeah, yes. I, <laughs> yes. I think it's I think it's either ours or it's got to be alien. But if if we're taking aliens off the table, then there's no question in my mind that it's ours. I also like why is is there a legitimate theory that it's people from the future is that that, that is a theory oh, yeah God. that is the theory that kind of makes sense <laughs> well i mean if if 
if you're saying, or not humans from the future, maybe like if you're saying different time. Here's line. something interesting to think about. If you're saying it's people from the future, that's they just took as, our jobs. <laughs> that's just as plausible as aliens. You think it had? Yeah. What do you think about that's, that? That's fair. Well, do you think it's the, just as plausible? Well, I mean, based based on the the theoretical theoretical technology required to do the maneuvers that these craft do, um, it's manipulating space time, right? And so, you know, if, if you're if you can go out and say yes, this is possible, or this is what they have, then then yeah, absolutely. Like it could be us from the future checking back and like, all right, kids, don't blow yourselves up, you know. <laughs> You'd think they, if they were doing that, they'd be like influencing our behavior some maybe, way. Maybe they have rules and like laws. That yeah, you just have to like. Well, they're not good at following <laughs> them because we're seeing them. I'll tell you the most. So I, I'm sure you listen to this. The guy that was on Lex Friedman and then then on Joe Rogan, the fighter pilots. Oh, Ryan Graves. Yes. Yep. Yep. So listening to his account. Well. You got multiple pilots going on here. Yeah, I know. Yeah. The Ryan Graves is the one I just recently listened to. And he's interesting, too, because he has a degree in aerospace engineering. So, like, beyond just being a, a like a top flight pilot, he's also, he's got some expertise in this field. So, like, when he's looking at these things in the sky, he's he's able to kind of calculate the speed and the, you know. Yeah. So he, I think he's, he's like, a, one of the more credible witnesses, I would say. And when he talks about how it was like, uh, a, a like a, a a sphere with a with a box inside of it, or yeah. like a triangle. What was it? A triangle or a box inside of it? Uh, uh, yeah, cube. Like a like a yeah like a translucent sphere, a sphere with a cube inside of it. That was like what like the size of like I don't remember how big he said it was, like the size of a car or something. Yeah, and that they were. Have you listened to this? Yeah, I've listened. And that they were just statically positioned, like right, like off the coast of like North Carolina, and like during like their entry and exit into like their air zone, they would just pass these things just sitting there. Yeah, and I'm like, why don't that's crazy? Why don't <laughs> well, people care about that? Well, it was like a joke in that community. It's like, oh, did you see? Hey, we we're out and about today. Did you see the flying car? And yeah, you know, like, did you see the cube up there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And well, like a lot of people saw him, right? Yeah, he said that that more and more pilots are coming out now and saying, "Yeah, we see these things all the time." And there's different shapes. There's the the more disc shape, the triangular shape ones, the the cube inside the sphere. And he's like, these pilots are talking about the fact that they see these up and down the east coast, up and down the west coast, and now and now everywhere. over the country, yeah, you know, over the uh, over the continent um, of the U.S. Do other countries report seeing them. I know they, they oh, yeah. but but like as much as we do. Oh yeah, really? Yeah. There's there's a an estimate that I heard um, the other day where they 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 calculate that once every like eight seconds uh, across the world somebody <laughs> cites something that's unidentified. Wait, oh really? Yeah. It doesn't doesn't mean that yeah, it's yeah, only yeah, UFO, yeah, yeah. but like something up in the sky that doesn't make sense. You know. And are other countries military seeing them to the? Oh yeah frequency that we are and do they report on it like we do the brit didn't the yeah. british government have like a program too oh yeah um the english the the royal air force um definitely spotted them uh the the former soviet air force spotted them there's a there's some big cases in in the middle east um down in brazil there's a huge case where the the brazilian um i guess it's air force uh or navy spotted something that they were kind of you know okay um, but yeah, they're, they're seen everywhere and, and it depends on the country in terms of like how open they are about mm -hmm. it. Um, from, from what I can tell just in what I've read, uh, most governments seem to be pretty, pretty tight knit about it. Yeah. Um, uh, there's, there's a particular sighting that happened in Australia that involved a, uh, a school and there were, you know, tons of students there and teachers and faculty that's, that saw this craft and same kind of thing happened there that happened with a lot of the sightings in the U S especially throughout the decades where, you know, government officials, military officials showed up and they're like, uh, you didn't see what you thought you saw. Okay. I haven't heard uh, about uh, this Australia thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I haven't heard about the Australia thing. Yeah. Uh, hang on. Let me uh, go to the notes. There's a, there, the Westall school in Australia. Um, there were witnesses in, uh, 1966. This is when my wife should be Googling this right now, <laughs> yeah. by the way. Westall. You gotta tell me. Yeah. Westall? yeah. And if like something cool comes up, you use your discretion and put it on the screen. 
I, I believe it was a, <laughs> it was a high school. Yeah. yeah what, what, was, when, when was this? 1966. Oh, oh, this is an old sighting. Yeah. And so there's a, there's a really good documentary. There's a documentarian named uh, James Fox, whose uh, work I particularly um, like. There's one uh, documentary called The Phenomenon. That came out a couple years okay. ago. That's really not good. the Travolta not, movie. Yeah, not the no. movie. <laughs> <laughs> that was aliens, though. Yeah, that's yeah. True. There's an angel, and uh, no, um, he had great hair too. Um, no, that's right. So, uh, but James Fox in that documentary does a really good job of kind of um, giving a high level. Oh, overview she's got something up here. Different cases. Yeah, like this is the main photo. Yep. Showing. Is that wait? Is that actually what it looked like? Yeah, it was supposed to be a typical disc shaped object. But, is that um, a real photo of the incident, or is that like a? Oh, just... that I don't know. Probably, a, I would, I would imagine, probably a um, recreation of some kind. Okay, but um, there was a teacher in the documentary, uh, one of the science teachers who um, agreed for the first time to talk about it on camera, but only if they hid his identity. Why do they care? I mean, like, a no, whole, I get that. Whole, like, I, I like, well, I'm I'll just tell you. Okay, sorry. Go <laughs> so ahead. they so they came. They actually came to his house after it happened, and some some military officials said, "Look, you know, um, you didn't see what you thought you saw. And if you do publicly go out and say it, we'll tell every, tell everyone that you were drunk. We'll destroy your career, and then we'll also prosecute you uh, based on some law of you know." This is like the Australian government. Yeah. Come, okay, this is in the '60s, right? Yeah. But see, if there if there's if there's this guy's like, admitting he's like telling this story now. Yeah, he's like, I totally saw this thing, but this is they told me that basically they would absolutely just ruin my career and and prosecute me and put me in jail if I publicly talk about what I saw. He's like, but I absolutely saw it, and the kids saw it too, who are now obviously adults. Yeah, you know? and they all stick to it too. It's all you know. That's what's so, interesting. So, so, what was the sighting? A disc shape? Yeah, there was craft. an object. Um, I don't recall the details specifically, but I know some some craft was hovering nearby the schoolyard, and so all these kids, like tons of kids and faculty and staff, all saw this object and were like, "What in the world is Did this?" Did something um, weird? Like I, I know with like a lot of these stories, people get like radiation burns or like something like that. Did anything happen to these people? Or they just like saw it and it kind of buzzed off. Not that I recall. Um, there's an, another interesting case that took place, I want to say in the 70s, that took place in, uh, I think it was like Zimbabwe, another school, uh, another, you know, a ton of kids who were out in the in the schoolyard on recess, and a couple of the kids actually went up close to the craft, and what? I think some of them had some physical Wait, reactions. what? Yeah. The craft was on the ground? Yeah. It this like is in Zimbabwe? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't remember exactly what year, but I know that the, the kids are all probably in their... I'd say 40s at this point, but um, it says 1994. Oh, maybe it was for, right? for Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Could be, yeah, it could yeah. be. And so, like, people approach it. You know, no one got a picture. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's you know that that is the thing about all yeah. this UFO stuff. It's that's like Neil deGrasse Tyson's argument. Too. We have, we have. Uh, I mean, we the, the 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 coolest thing I see is the footage from the the fighter pilots. Yeah. Like that's the, but it's like, even that's granny though, even that's bad. Yeah. And so it's like, if these things really are as prevalent as we think they are, how come someone doesn't grab a picture of it? Well, yeah. I think it's only a matter of time. I agree. You yeah. know, I mean, yeah. weren't there, there was some good video at night of like sailors on like a destroyer. It's, uh, that's yeah. it's always at night. It's always grainy footage. It's <laughs> yeah. always like dark. I know it's I never agree. like, I agree. It's like the big, like, like yeah. this Ryan Graves guy. You know, he has his iPhone with him up there. Why couldn't he yeah. just like take a picture of the sphere? Yeah, especially if you know? you're seeing him all the time. You're seeing him all the time. Right. Like that I, would I don't literally know. be the first thing I do. <laughs> I, I don't think they. <laughs> no. I, don't, I don't know if they saw them physically so much. Just the Ryan Graves does. It, it happened a few times. I know they yeah. said that, but it was mainly like, even if they were radar. far away and it was like crappy. Wouldn't you pull out yeah. your phone and like try and zoom in and like yeah. grab some pics of it? Yeah. Well, I think, see, and that's like, all right, this is I think, weird. I yeah. think part of the deal, though, is, is the, some of these pilots or whatever um, who are up there, I, I think some of them had said, yeah, we do actually, we did take better footage. Like, this is only through some of the technology, some of the, uh -huh. uh, um, oh. some of the, you know, like the FLIR camera or whatever. We actually do have better video footage, but like, it's so classified, we can't. We yeah, it. that that and that makes sense. Like they they've you know they've released the stuff, but they're yeah. obviously not releasing the really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they said there's uh, what I think I can't remember which one it was. The but then why wouldn't they? Like why would know. you release some stuff and not release? That goes back to my argument that they're trying to just Slow like trickle. prime us. I think you're right. 
And I think I think the government. I think this is this is my theory. This is complete speculation at this point. But I think um, I think they're they're feeling out is like, look, technology is kind of, you know, it, it's advancing to the point where we all have, you know, so they know they're like someone's going to grab a, yeah. yeah. So like eventually the public is going to disclose this stuff on their own. They're going to cut the middleman out. So why don't we just like slowly just nudge it in that direction without like freaking everyone out. And then it'll be a slow release kind of what, um, cause I'm going to have Allie pull it up. What's like your best picture of one? Oh gosh. Um, best picture there's, I know there's some from like the sixties that are pretty, pretty clear. Um, uh, but again, it's like, no one's gotten like a picture of one, right? Oh yeah. There's, there's pictures all <laughs> over the place. But again, like some of them, especially as you go back in time, we're, yeah. we're using, you know, 35 millimeter right, right, film. Right, 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 right. But there are some pretty okay. clear ones. All right. What is that? Not that I can see that. Zoom in. Well, there you go. It's grainy because it's zoomed right. in. Which, where, where is this from? Oh, there's the triangular one. Yeah, I think this is the triangular one. Oops. Now those, I'm convinced the triangular shaped ones are ours. I've And I've yeah. seen some like photos of some like experimental planes from the Air Force that look like really similar to something like that. Yeah, and they're, <clears throat> they actually just released something this last week. Um, oh, there's really? The, there's the next level. Um, the F-22? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a new bomber. Yeah. Oh, no, no, I'm thinking of something else. Yeah, there's a there's a new bomber. It's like the next level stealth technology. They just released like um, oh of it. the B two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the they're all one. they're all like black and kind of triangular shaped. Yeah. So like that seems to I be our like, go to right now is the triangular shaped black situation. And so yeah. I, I'm I'm thinking the triangular shaped ones are probably ours. The other ones, I mean, I just I don't know. What? The triangular ones we have we haven't seen the triangular ones kind of you know pull off the maneuvers that we've seen some of these other you know like the TikTok. And I want to come back to that. Yeah. point in a second but let's okay so let's say it's aliens why do you think they have like they they clearly want us to know that they exist right why haven't they interacted with us or something like you know what i mean what but, do you think but how can you like how can you make assumptions like that that's their mindset i may right i'm a human i'm not an alien You're so right, like right. i can't but like if you think logically about it they're, from a, they're, from a human standpoint. Correct. Yeah. They're they're doing things that make them known. They're just scouting out resources. That's the gimbal. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. the gimbal footage, right? That she's got on the computer. Yeah. Yeah. Put that yeah. on the screen. Okay. Is that gimbal or go fast? I don't know. It's one. Yeah, it's one of the two. It's not the TikTok. I know that. That's the one that kind of changes, changes directions. The crazy thing is that dark Ooh, color. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that high heat? The dark. No, it's color. low heat. Low heat. It's, isn't it no heat? I think so. The yeah. white around it is heat. But what's yeah. interesting is that no exhaust. That is an alien. <laughs> I mean, isn't that nuts? Like That's we're, something, we're, man. We're, we're looking at something. It's not Russia. We're looking at something. It's either like the most advanced technology humans have ever had, and it's so classified, or it's aliens, or it's people from the future. Right. <laughs> Well, no one talks about that. <laughs> I mean, just talking about like the, the the propulsion system that this thing uses, just in in general, like just take away like the whole so let's, argument. Let's go to that. Can yeah. you explain? My wife's probably never heard this. Can you explain about the propulsion systems? No, you can't because you don't well, know. But you know a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's I can tell you the theory behind it. So what we so here the, the facts are that we know for a fact that it it doesn't use propulsion uh, based on our like current. it doesn't use like person that creates heat or like burnt like you know what right. i mean like there's no exhaust plume right uh so it's not it's so it's not the the current system of propulsion that we've used for for decades and decades where you know there's exhaust pushing out the back and, and pushing this object forward it, it's it it creates no heat signature there's no exhaust plume there's no wings there's no typical aerodynamic dynamic design to these things and so the the theory is that these things um based on the way it moves and, and the speeds that it can get up to because like the speeds that they're quoting that this thing is moving at it's are insane, things. right? Yeah, and like I I looked it up just for giggles uh, earlier today. I was like, all right, what's the fastest like known like aircraft that we have? And it's like there was something called the X fifteen. I think that they retired, uh, but it got up to four thousand five hundred twenty miles an hour. Damn, Mach six point seven. Tom Cruise went faster in Maverick too, <laughs> <laughs> while hanging out of the plane. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That dude makes me panic when I see him do stunts. I'm just like, oh my god. So okay, that's our fastest plane. So that was our fastest, our fastest that 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 
currently it is being used because they figured out that that thing's so fast, but it doesn't carry any like weapons or anything like okay. that. So like it, it the basically the, the gist of it is that they they created something to go so fast that it can't be tracked by by radar. Okay. Right? Oh. And so, hmm. uh, but the the Lockheed SR seventy one Blackbird can do all the things that this one could do. Plus, it, it it's not as fast, but it can also carry like weapons and stuff like that. So that one goes tops out at uh, I think it was twenty five hundred uh, miles an hour. So Blackbird's no longer in service, supposedly. Right. <laughs> well, we might it's have been out service right? Yeah. We got better things. Yeah. But some of these objects that that these unidentified objects are going roughly between six and twelve thousand miles an hour. Wait, yeah. really? Yeah. So they know that? Yeah, they can. They can, uh, like through video footage, you know, they can kind of calculate roughly. Are, like, are how you fast it's going. are you buying into the Bob Lazar Element One Fifteen story? The One Fifteen's been proven. Yeah. So, like, are you like the dude? The dude is a hundred percent. Telling the truth. I mean, so far, all the things that we thought were bullshit, like back when you first kind of came out or whatever, back in the 80s, uh, what's weird about it is all these far-fetched things that he was claiming that everybody's like, this dude's wackadoo. Have all, a lot of them have been proven since then, like the hand scanners and, yeah. and um, you know, all, all these other things that he claimed, you know, that sounded really far-fetched. But like since then, small bits and pieces of information. In fact, people who worked with him were like, oh, yeah, I saw him there. You know, so right. I don't doubt that he actually worked there. I think that's like I believe that he worked there. Well, so to, so the theory is that to create a uh, propulsion system that base, basically works on anti gravity, so it it would have to create it would have to have a hu- massive power source mm-hmm. to create a gravitational pull in and of itself to be able to essentially bend space time. So it's essentially leapfrogging as opposed to um, trying to invent uh, an object that goes faster. So back when I was a kid, you know, we talked about like. Well, how are we going to travel to the stars? Well, we need something that can go faster than the speed of light, which is really impossible. fast. Yeah, yeah. We can go past. We can break the sound barrier, but speed of light, you know, according to I think it's Einstein's equations, is impossible. And so, so then, so then you have to look at alternate forms of, of, of travel. Well, either we have to travel long distances over generations and have this giant mm-hmm. starship that's basically like a floating, you know, planet. Um, or you have to figure out alternate ways to, to leapfrog across fast distances. And one of the theories is to create, if you create enough gravitational pull, you can warp space time and uh, essentially leapfrog. And so that's the theory behind these objects. But in order to do that, you would need some sort of fuel and some sort of system that would create these gravitational magnifiers. And so the Bob Lazar theory is that it's this element 115. Okay. I knew about the 115. That That's the fuel source. Yeah. Do you think that these things are unmanned? I think it's possible some of them are, yeah. Like drones, basically. Like, that would make yeah. sense. Mm-hmm. Like, if you were sending, if you, like, I'm trying, I'm thinking like a human. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, like, let's say you got this, like, new civilization. And, or, you know, the or, other thing we haven't talked a- about. aliens are just AI. Well, that's a whole other. That's yeah, a theory, mind too. Blow. Yeah. yeah. But, like, there's Gold something. Like Transformers. There style. is something to the yes. fact that, like, <laughs> all, like the, there's a, there's, like, they talk about how we've, we started, we've started seeing these since, like, the increase in, like, nuclear power, right? Oh, yeah. Like, that's, like, so, like, maybe they're, like, okay, we've got this civilization over in the Milky Way that's about to just blow everybody up and let's send some drones out there to just, like, keep tabs on them. That kind of makes sense to me. But then it would make sense if, if that was the case that they would be unmanned. Yeah, and, and if you do, you remember, think we found a body? According to if you believe in Lazar, I did think, Lazar say we had bodies? Yeah, yeah. I think it's possible. I think um, if if in fact there were some crashes, like uh, like they talk about, and, and Roswell obviously is the most famous, but certainly not the only one. There was one actually that took place in the eighteen hundreds that took place. Really? To yeah. Oh. Yep. Where can you tell us about that? Yeah, um, that one, I can't remember if I that took notes, notes on that one or not. Yeah, I really, I really appreciate that you took notes. It's <laughs> because my memory is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Allie. I can remember the gist of things, but details, not so yeah. much. Um, but yeah, this one took place, I think it was um, it was out west, and um, it uh, supposedly crashed into like a farmer's windmill. And so they went out and uh, discovered just wreckage everywhere. And, it, and they described it as something that was um, kind of like a shiny metal um, that, that was similar to like aluminum or some sort of aluminum alloy. And for whatever reason, they dumped the stuff into the well there and um, allegedly really? had a body that they buried in a local cemetery. And what's interesting about this is that um, 
UFO investigators, including MUFON, uh, went out decades later, obviously. This is like 1890s, I think. Um, investigators went out after, uh, much, much later, to investigate, and they found uh, actual like pieces of metal, like 100 yards in, in, in the radius of where this crash would have happened. And then they took samples from the well, and it came back with high levels of like aluminum or aluminum alloy. And the guy that bought the farm after that actually suffered from all these like, um, like skin abrasions and all this stuff, which is consistent with drinking water with like high, high amounts of these elements in them. Mm. But there was a uh, grave marker <coughs> uh, out in the local cemetery that had um, like a UFO engraved on it, like a disc. And so they went out to investigate it, and they use these um, metal detectors, and they got a hit, like as if this metal had been buried with this this body in the cemetery. Well, then they, they thought, oh, we'll, we'll get permission to exhume it. And then the local society or whatever said, no, absolutely not. You can't. Of course. And then they went back, and the grave marker was suddenly gone, and there was no hits in the spot. So they think that whatever was there was moved. And so it's like, again, you know, frustrating, because who knows? Another, so... I'd never heard that story. That's kind of cool. There, you could have a whole discussion probably on like the historical oh, yeah. sightings. One thing, uh, this is not specifically related to what you just talked about, but I had heard, and you can help me confirm whether I'm remembering this correctly, but I had heard that the Pentagon, like in releasing all this stuff about UFOs, they had, had they, how did they release some sort of docket where they had been talked to about people who claim they have been abducted? Am I remembering that? Um, I'm going into alien abduction is where we're going with this comment. <laughs> yeah, there's... Um, like, I, I thought somewhere the government had at least acknowledged that people had come to them saying that they were abducted. I'm not I'm not sure if that was included in that that data dump, but there was a, a, a um, well-respected um, psychiatrist from uh, back in the, um, I want to say like 60, 70, somewhere along those lines, who was doing like a you know, legitimate practice and started working with people who came forward and, and were saying that, you know, I was abducted. And at first he thought, you know, a bunch Wait, of when was this? Sorry. This is back in like the, uh, I want to say like the seventies. Okay. Okay. So, okay. And I'm trying to think of the guy's name, but, but Ralph Blumenthal actually wrote a book on it called the believer. And it's about this guy's work. And, um, Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating because this guy thought it was all like nonsense. Like the psychiatrist. Yeah. Yeah. And, but the more people that came forward, he said, you know, at the very least, he said, these people are telling the truth insofar as that they believe this like they is what think happened. it's true. <laughs> so he was kind of like open to it because he said, you know, I, I've had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. come. What forward. do you think? I, that one's hard for me to say. Like, for me, it's it, the, the more we, we dive into the stuff that's like a little bit more out there. Mm hmm the harder it is to legitimize the stuff that might be true. And not saying that that isn't true, but I think we need to start with identifying these objects first. Mm -hmm. And then once we confirm or, or either way that it's either us or aliens, then we can kind of go into the, you know, the realm of abductions from there. But I don't know. I I think it's entirely possible if aliens are visiting and they're observing. I mean, there us, seems to be like so many people, people claiming that this sort of thing has happened maybe not abductions yeah. but like interactions You're like okay at some point is like maybe like it's probably not people just seeking attention maybe it is you know i don't know it's yeah. definitely some of that definitely some of that and that's yeah. the problem with this it muddies the water um but like you can get like real crazy about some of the abduction stories and those oh, are terrifying. hundred percent. But then it make it makes logical sense to me as a human that yeah. if there was somebody here trying to like poke around and figure out what we're doing, that they'd probably pick a few of us up and poke and prod us, you know? I'm like, well, yeah. that kind of makes sense. Here's a, here's a uh, good, <laughs> good comment. Yeah. Allie, if there's any good comments you want to uh, read, read the yeah. Andrew Sherman ones. Oh, uh, <laughs> The last I saw is that he said that crash happened in Aurora, Texas, 10 there miles north of Fort Worth, Texas. Yes. Oh, this is the one with like the old one you were talking about? Yeah. Okay. He's been like... to the cemetery. Oh, hey. Oh. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That way, did you say that was in like the 1700s? 1800s. 1890. Yeah. 18... Okay. 97. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So this one predates uh, Roswell, obviously. So yeah. it kind of goes back to this idea that... Um, for, for a lot of people within the last five years, this this is kind of a new phenomenon. But like 
for people who have been interested in this field, like we've spotted these things for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so like at the very least, you can go back to uh, World War II where World War II pilots spotted these objects in the sky all the time. They called them Foo Fighters, which is where the band name comes from. I did not know that. We talked about it last time. Well, I was drinking last time. <laughs> and I will probably get yeah, this conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A year from now, that's where yeah. Foo Fighters came from. <laughs> Sweet it's name. a cool name. Yeah, that's great. But that yeah, was like, World War II, you said? World War II, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of sightings back then, too. So if, if you're going to say that, like, our adversaries have had this technology, then you also have to admit, well, then they've had this technology for decades I, uh, have yet to use that it is <laughs> the easiest thing for me to get over is like it's russia mm-hmm. maybe china they're actually smart yeah but uh <laughs> I, I i don't buy that it's it's certainly not i don't may, maybe china they're they're wily yeah. but uh, i don't think it's like another superpower generally speaking i, I no. think there's a much higher likelihood it's ours well and, and here's the thing too is is russia was working on starting to develop this hypersonic uh, weaponry, right? They yeah. just said they had some, and, and they might yeah. because we we started to, but yeah, then we realized we that it's wildly inaccurate. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and so like, I I just don't buy that because these objects that we're seeing in the sky are not only are they uh, are they that fast, they're like hypersonic speeds, but they're also turning on a dime. I know that's what's yeah. crazy. It's like they're going so fast and they go like this, right angles. Yeah, like how cool know. would it be if it was U.S. military tech? And there's like. Yeah. Uh, Got you guys. We yeah. just have sick fighters now. I mean, what a brilliant way to like flex on the entire yeah. world, though, right? It's not <laughs> aliens. We just have sick planes. <laughs> well, and that's and that's one of the theories that I I could buy into, right? It's just like we're just like covertly flexing. You on see, everyone. I don't like, know that. I, fuck that around, that would out. be that <laughs> would be so cool. But I really like if it really was us. Mm-hmm. I mean, the leap in technology. Oh, from like exponential. Like you, you know the military has stuff better than we know about. Of course. Got it. Yeah. But the leap in what you're talking about doing, which is what we see in these fighter pilot videos of like 10,000 miles an hour turning on a dime, like it's so far advanced from what we currently have. Like yeah. then it's like, oh, did we just get it from aliens? Or did we really make some ridiculous technological breakthrough? And, and like now yeah. we have this stuff. But I don't, I don't, I, I don't know. Not that putting a likelihood to any of this stuff is accurate, but I feel like there's a higher likelihood it's aliens. Yeah. It's know. like, it, you know, to your point, or you, I've said that all along. It's, it's like, cl- it's clearly aliens. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> it's like jumping from like a, a horse and buggy yeah, yeah, yeah. to like a propeller airplane. Yeah. You know? It's like that big of a leap. Like we're talking about a completely, completely different propulsion system. And like we've used essentially the same propulsion system for decades. We've just enhanced it along the way. And so we're talking about leapfrogging that technology entirely into something completely different. Yeah. And the implications are that are are we can go visit the nearest, you know, galaxy in seconds. Right. And 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 that's that opens everything up. I want to see pictures. <laughs> I, I, I know. I know. Right. Just we have iPhones. Just just bring us some pictures. I know. Yeah. Right. I want to see what the other planets look like. I'm just waiting for like somebody to post like a even like a 10 second video on like YouTube or TikTok of like, hey, like I saw this. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like live stream. I just feel like that has to come. Yeah. With like everything that's been going on. Well, and to go back to your earlier question, it's like if if aliens came down right now in the middle of this podcast and we're like, Hey guys, you know, and yeah. we were like t- trying to tell the world, like, yo, we just saw it. aliens. Everybody's going to think we're nuts. So that is a great thing to discuss. Is <laughs> why does it, and the, maybe the government's done a great job in what they're trying to do, but like, why <laughs> does nobody care? I think it's because nobody it's stigmatized. It. Yeah. But even the government is literally like, uh, all our fighter pilots are seeing this stuff. Here is this stuff. We don't know what it is. Like mm-hmm. they've all said that. Like the Department of Defense has said that. Nobody cares. We need a body. That's the only way to change them. Yeah. 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 Well, we the thing to Andy's point though. <laughs> we need a body. <laughs> they, they work. They work so hard for so long to stigmatize it yeah. though that like yeah. they've done such a good job for like decades that even now when they're like, oh, just kidding, UFOs are but, real. Like, think, even now people are like, it's, no. think think if you could go back to like. When Roswell happened and the UFO mania was like full zeal, and the US government's like, yeah, yeah. you guys are right. <laughs> <laughs> like, people would go nuts. I love the theory back then, though, because uh, looking back at some of the archives, they're like, clearly it was a spaceship from Mars. And we're like, no, Mars is a dead That's land. very specific. <laughs> yeah. That's or, very specific. Or one of, the, one of the military officers was like, uh, Mars or Jupiter? I'm like, 
Jupiter's That's very a random. gas planet, That's sir. very <laughs> random. That's I very random. I think we random. knew that then, too. Yeah. They've, they've got to be outside this solar system, right? Oh, 100%. Right? Because yeah. we've done a pretty good job of snooping out planets yeah. in our solar system. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's crazy to me that nobody just seems to care. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. It doesn't it doesn't impact most people's daily lives. Until they're here. Yeah, then yeah. we'll deal with it. When it <laughs> they just squash us. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, okay, well. All right, let's fight them now. It would be a good unifying thing on the planet. That's what Reagan said to the UN. It's very true. Decades ago, he said he said it would take he said instantaneously the world would 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 join forces and and forget about their petty differences as so, soon as we had a, a yeah just, just a, like a real like, threat yeah, yeah. just like starship troopers exactly yeah. it is just like starship troopers <laughs> and independence day yes. both wonderful documentaries. Yeah. <laughs> independence day is a great movie yeah, <laughs> do you think these these ufos i won't call them aliens mm-hmm. do you think that their intent is ill-mannered I think it depends. I think if I think if we're acknowledging the fact that an alien race could be visiting, then we have to acknowledge the fact that there could be multiple alien races visiting. I see. I never thought about. I, I've never once considered that all of these UFOs could come from mul- different areas. Yeah. I, I I I never really. Do you think that's a? And in the people you talk to, do you think that's a high likelihood? Uh, yeah, I think, I think they think based on the different types, like they're all the different crafts are so different looking. Yeah. So I think, I think the, the assumption though, is that if there's one intelligent race out there, there's probably more than one. And if that's the case, you know, they're probably just checking us out to see where we're at in our evolution. And, and, um, some might have ill intent and maybe they're farming us for people food, you know? <laughs> oh, like, uh, uh. What was that other Tom Cruise movie? <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. I haven't seen that one. I know what you're talking about. She's or, seen, a, she's seen War, War of the Worlds. Oh, oh the Worlds. yeah, that movie gave me a yeah. panic attack. Yeah, we, the movie is yeah. creepy as hell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the, we were they, we were food, right? I remember yeah. seeing that in the theater. Same in the Matrix. Yeah, yeah. But I remember thinking, I'm like, oh my god, if something like this happened, we'd be screwed. There's nothing we could do. Hey, get a 12 gauge. <laughs> yeah. Hey, no. Tom Cruise figured it out. Yeah. That's true. He did. Yeah. No, it, it turns out that they were just susceptible to diseases. Did you, um, you just give them the sniffles. Yeah. Ha, ha, have you? Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. yeah we, we, right. We, was it water or air? No, that's the movie signs. Oh, that's that, water. Yeah. Yeah. No, but in, in, in War of the Worlds, what was it? Air? Like they, no, yeah, yeah, it was just diseases. It was just bacteria and diseases. Have you, um, little. have you seen the movie? Nope. Oh yeah. Okay. It's what do you think? Movie. It's a great movie. Yeah. What do you think in terms of like that? Like, what do you think about UFOs taking that approach of just like screwing with a tiny little area and nobody knowing about? Like, you know what I mean? I mean, it's it's. I, Have I you guess seen anything's it? possible? It's a good movie. Nope. It's, it's a good movie. It's beautiful. Okay. Yeah. It's a well shot movie. Yes. 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 It's a little. Sc- it's a little scary. Creepy. She was a little yeah. creeped out by it. I thought it was good though. Like a ship that's. Made of organic material. It's kind of yeah. interesting, you know, yeah. <laughs> interesting take on it. But yeah, I mean, I think I think we have to think kind of outside our parameters. It's very difficult to think not like a human about this. Yeah. And because you know if it's not a human, unless it's people from the future. <laughs> which us. which nice if it's that backs. case, <laughs> they're, they're coming back here because there's no jobs left. Little babies there's no jobs heads. left. <laughs> That's right. And the inflation rate. Yeah. Um, Skynet. <laughs> But, I, you know, it's, I think about it logically like a human, but these things, maybe they're not human, so they don't think about it like... Yeah. But then it's like, you know, there's so many questions. Like, why are they here? And they're not... They're not... Re- like, maybe they're abducting people, but they're really not messing with us, but they're they're really getting close with the fighters. Like, so they obviously don't care about being seen by fighter jets, and it's like... It's kind of an... In- like, I, I don't know. There's yeah. no logic behind yeah. it. Yeah. 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 John's got some cool sighting stuff, though. Oh, yeah. 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 So it kind of goes along with what you are talking about earlier. So I'm always interested in um, finding the most credible witnesses you right. find. Okay. And so for me, it's like people who either have an expertise in like aircraft, so like pilots who have been doing yeah. this for a long time. They're, they're going to know the difference between a bird and yeah. like a blimp and like Venus, you mm-hmm. know? And so like there are a number of fascinating uh, cases that involve uh, military installations, specifically where we house our nuclear silos. I've heard about these. Tell, tell us, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, there's a there's a big one um, <clears throat> that I was looking into. Uh, there's a guy named Lieutenant Robert Salas. He was stationed at the Maelstrom Air Force Base in Montana, 
And not only him, but there were a multitude of different uh, ranking people who, who we worked have in this nu- space. We have nukes there, I assume. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bless you, Andy. Um, <laughs> what kind of nukes? So those are the ICBMs? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right, so what, what, happened, what happened out there? So um, on the evening of March 24th, 1967, uh, they started to see some strange lights in the sky um, hovering above this nuclear weapons storage unit. And so I had multiple witnesses um, by different Air Force personnel, including Salas. And at the time, he was the ballistic missile launch officer. So, you know, obviously they take anything that's an incursion in the airspace, especially over a missile silo, pretty seriously. Yeah. So they're kind of trying to figure out what this is. And, um, you know, it, they, they identified it as this red pulsating light that had a diameter of roughly like 30 feet. And this thing's just like hovering. And so minutes after the sighting, all of a sudden, all the missiles inside the storage unit go into what's called a no-go condition. What? Which means they are disabled and cannot be launched. Has what? Wait, <laughs> has yeah. the U.S. government admitted <laughs> that this happened? Uh, I don't know that they formally admitted it, but they've had a ton of former uh, military personnel, like high-ranking too, who have who have basically reported on this after the fact. So a lot of these guys, I think, are getting older and. This guy even was forced to sign a non-disclosure. Oh, point. really? And, you know, they've come out later, and they're at the point in their lives where they're just like, you know, they're 70s and 80s, and they're like, what are you going to do, kill me? <laughs> Go for it. I didn't realize the government was making them sign NDAs about it. Oh, well, yeah. that would, I mean. It makes think, sense. Think, uh, basically, our nukes had a weakness. Yeah, you don't want the our enemies to know that. Right? Um, I see a whole page entitled Nuclear Incidents. I would like to learn more <laughs> about them. <laughs> So, yeah, so so they go into this no-go condition. They're all disabled, can't be launched. So when it investigated, no system failures and no individuals had disabled them because obviously it takes more than one individual, mm-hmm. you know, to, uh, uh, to do that. And so um, the object was witnessed um, to have accelerated incredibly high speeds and disappeared at one point. But after the incident, a member of the Air Force Office of Special Investigations ordered them to not talk about it. And like I said, Salas was forced to sign a non an NDA, non-disclosure statement. But there was another guy, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Dwin Arneson. He was a strategic air command officer with top secret clearance and was on duty at Maelstrom um, at the time of the sighting. This is late 60s, right? Yeah, this okay. is 67. Um, he had received multiple reports of the object by the crew coming off duty and then the one coming on duty. So he's getting all these reports. And so um, several years later... Uh, Arneson is working, he started working with Boeing, and Boeing happens to be the main uh, missile contractor of, of the Air Force, right? Of course. So he's working with Boeing, and he ends up working with this guy named Robert Kaminsky. And Kaminsky um, also confirmed the reports of the UFO that were cited, but what's weird about this is the Air Force instructed Kaminsky and the engineers to discontinue any investigation immediately and to not follow up on it. Really? Which is odd, and it kind of goes back to the modern day sightings where these these Air Force pilots and these Navy pilots are saying, "Hey, like this is an incursion to our airspace, and potentially like they're flying very very close. There could be an incident, mid air collision or whatever." And it seems that like the higher ups are just not taking it seriously. So it's very strange. So there's another guy named Lieutenant Robert Jameson who's at home at the time. And he's the missile targeting officer. He gets a call at home instructing him, like, dude, you got to come back to the base, bring these missiles back online. So he comes back. They brief him upon arrival. And then he's quoted as saying, look, like he says, very rarely does a missile malfunction. And I don't think any much rare would be two at the same time, but never 10. So they had 10 missiles that went offline all at the same time. He's like, I know that the U.S. government does not obviously appreciate people such as myself and these gentlemen speaking out about this. What we're describing on an ongoing basis, decade after decade, at multiple Air Force bases is just disruption of our nuclear missiles. So, like, all these incidents are being recorded. And so what's fascinating about this is it... So I I, I was interested to say, because, again, I'm, I'm trying to look for ways in which this cannot be our adversaries. So yeah. One of the ways that you would potentially look at it is, is this happening to our adversaries as well? And sure enough, there are incidents in uh, the former Soviet Union. So it does. Yeah. So after the fall of the Soviet Union, uh, some of the documents got released uh, and and some folks got a hold of them. And it turns out that they had a similar incident that occurred in um, in a um, in some of their silos in Siberia. And then again in Ukraine, uh, where there was an incident, I believe, in the the early 80s, where all of a sudden all their weapons went like into firing position. 
And so really? They're like, so they're all like shitting their pants, like, oh God, we're about to start like yeah. nuclear holocaust. And so they're yeah. scrambling in for like what seemed, I'm sure, like an eternity, but was only like a very short, brief period of time. Um, all of a sudden, just as quickly as it, they went online, uh, they went off. And so all of a sudden- I never just, heard about that. Yeah. So really interesting. And then, <clears throat> so those those were obviously were like pretty far in the past, but there was an incident- as recently as October 26, 2010, uh, where uh, there's a uh, former contributing editor to The Atlantic reported that President Obama had been informed that on October 23rd, 50 nuclear intercontinental ballistic, ballistic missiles had gone offline. 50? 50, <laughs> 50, which comes this out to be about a ninth. Yeah. So a ninth of our arsenal went offline just out of nowhere. And same deal, like... Uh, they went down, and right around the same time, there were reports over a bunch of our nuclear silos of UFOs again. So, you know, a lot of those are out in, like, Wyoming. Yeah. And and they saw a cigar-shaped UFO, which is another weird shape. Yeah. So, like, this is happening even to this day. It's almost as if, like, the theory is that <clears throat> this advanced race is like, all right, kids, don't light the dynamite, you know? Yeah. And, like, we can turn this off anytime we want, so quit screwing around, you know? It's kind of actually like kind of nice. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like if Russia went wild with Ukraine and tried to like nuke Ukraine, maybe these people, these things would be like, all right, man, yeah. chill, out. chill out. <laughs> and to your point, like, you know, since the atomic age, since we started to test these things out. And uh, if you remember, like during that period of time where we were just testing nukes all the time, we did set one off in the atmosphere, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, which is Really a bad idea. Yeah. yeah. I don't know who thought that was a great. Let's just shoot one off in the atmosphere. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we couldn't do that today. We yeah. got all the satellites out. But <clears throat> but we set one off in the atmosphere, and it's like, well, if you want to, if you want to, um, you know, put a homing device on your planet in the middle of the Milky Way, that's a good yeah. way to do it. You know? Yeah. Like, hey, shoot off a Yeah. I, I, when, did, when did we set one off in the atmosphere? Like 50s, probably. 40s, 50s. Yeah, somewhere in there. We should Dude, have our we should have our expert. Yeah. What's, what's uh, the ele- uh, what's Allie, the- you're supposed to pick up on that. What's the elevation of that <laughs> atmosphere? Ele- uh, 50,000 feet? 100,000 feet? Just shot one up there and just, just <laughs> lit it off. <laughs> yeah. It, it, think about how dumb that is yeah, now. So hey, stupid. we invented nukes. Let's just <laughs> shoot one up there and like it ignited it's like in the a sky. Bottle, like a radiation yeah, like out. It 1962. works with bo- 1962. Off Even Honolulu. Worse. Uh, what 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 atmosphere? Or what, oh. sorry, what uh, elevation? Uh, let's see. Hundred thousand is my guess for it the was atmosphere. Called Starfish Prime. <laughs> Great name. <laughs> Nine hundred miles. Oh, this is southwest of Hawaii. Altitude of two hundred and fifty miles. I'm trying to do that in my head. Four hundred kilometers. That doesn't help me. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> what do you can, what do you know what you're trying to, to calculate? Oh, I don't like, know. like, you know, an airline cruises at 300,000 feet, 250 miles, so times five is, yeah, it's like uh, 120,000 feet, so it's high up there. Yeah. So, it's like, all this stuff kind of start. I didn't realize the 2010 one. That's I did, pretty I wasn't recent. aware of that one either, yeah. I just, I just uh, looked that one up, but I was like, I wonder if there's any more recent ones. But, yeah, so, I mean, this stuff happens, but they talked about um, the, the reports... Multitude of reports beginning at the beginning of the atomic age. So like Los Alamos are testing. Range. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, is that, that's the picture like, of it going off. It going off. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. In the atmosphere. Oh, uh-huh. Looks like the sun. Looks like Armageddon. Great idea, guys. <laughs> Great idea. Oh. Yeah, what is that? Okay. Okay. Oh, what's that? Same that's, thing? Yeah. Same thing. Good grief. Isn't that crazy? It's probably still like dust and crap up there. It's amazing that we haven't destroyed ourselves What's, yet. um... What do you think, like, how much, like, behind-the-scenes stuff do you think the U.S. government is doing about this UFO stuff? Oh, I mean, we've They have to be doing a bunch of stuff, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Every time they they, say that they're not doing anything, they're absolutely doing something. Right. (laughs) I mean, if someone is shutting off our nukes, clearly, just that alone is going to merit some sort of, like, thing. Well, clearly, in one of these budget proposal plans, there's money set aside for more more research... Or something like that of tracking this. I mean, what, they haven't just what is this year? Eight hundred twenty-five billion. Yeah, so yeah. maybe a hundred billion of that is going towards uh, you know UFO research. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That it's just it is interesting. Yeah, like, Operation like Catch One because the government. <laughs> the, 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 yeah, <laughs> Operation does <laughs> get them. <laughs> we need one. Yeah. <laughs> they need a live one. Yeah, pet alien. Yeah. <laughs> Do they? The government does not talk about their response to this stuff, right? No, they no. talked about 
a tip. Do they? A do bit. they? Yeah. I mean, well, they sure. talk about that, but that's like yeah. B. I mean, that's just like oh, we that's have just to like have, right. Yeah. They they don't formally talk about. Maybe it's under the space force now. No, I think that they have talked about the fact that they are continuing to like track. Do they? I mean, do they? Are they? But they're never like we. I'm sure they have some organization, mm-hmm. some Men in Black organization, where it's like their sole purpose is to figure this stuff out. Oh, but, they, yeah. but they don't actually admit to that, correct? I think they have what they acknowledge publicly, which is like the bare minimum just to be like... Which is yeah, like a yeah, committee, like a committee, it. like Marco Rubio's yeah. on it. But, yeah. But I also think yeah. like each branch of the military has probably some type of group within it that researches thing like th- credible threats. Coast Guard. Coast Guard. <laughs> Coast Guard. <laughs> Well, they have the the I mean, they're Andy, probably Andy talking about it. The Coast Guard got the responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> well, Andy and I were talking about the fact that, like, there's this new thing now with the um, UFOs underwater, the USOs. I yeah. want to talk about that. Yeah. Because. Oh, I, got, I got don't touch the wire cord issues yeah. the men in black because I, I saw I saw yeah they're cutting us down they're shutting us down <laughs> I saw that yeah like they're and I like I don't know why we don't talk like people don't talk about the fact that these things are going underwater yeah because I know I don't know if it's Tom DeLong or someone like maybe <laughs> it's Tom DeLong no but they were talking about how maybe these things maybe these things were put here a long time ago and they're cu- you know, they're coming up from the ocean yeah like uh What's that movie? I, was I that was that Contact? No, no, no. They, no, no uh, Sphere. Uh, no, no, yeah, no, 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 that's no, in no. the ocean. Yeah, no, but there's another one, uh, Cocoon. Oh yeah, oh, <laughs> that's yeah. right. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the theory is, but that, they're like, in the, they're in the water, right? Yeah, yeah. So so the the Tic Tac uh, Tic Tac uh, video. Allie, so, put, the, put the Tic Tac video up, please. Yeah. Okay. So so all of the the Navy personnel that that were witness to this said that they as they were chasing it eventually it, at some point it it goes into the water and so again if we're if we're talking about a um a craft of some kind that can create its own gravitational field uh-huh. then it's completely possible that this thing could dip in and out of the water no problem and what better way to hide because we we only have explored what like 10 percent of our world yeah oceans. And like nothing right we don't know what's down there and so like these things could have theoretically underwater bases and so like that area where the Tic Tac was spotted, there's just sightings all the time. Oh, okay, it's out this there. one. So the theory is that there's some sort of underwater. So this is like space. seeing it. Great job, Allie. Great job. Yeah. yeah. This is seeing it like that's a right above the surface, right? Of the water. Yep. And this is like off the coast of San Diego. Yeah. Is this a David Fravor video? Well, he was part of a squadron. They were all taking this pictures. Yeah, the, the Tic Tac one, there was actually a there was actually a bunch of them. And so the, they talk about the one that they show in the video, uh, but there were many more, they said. Um, it's they like shaped like a Tic Tac, right? That's yeah. Kind of a, like a little cylinder. Yeah. Yep. Do they say how big it was? They do, but I don't remember exactly how large they, they thought they were. But um, but they were like going from 30,000 feet to right above the surface of the water in like seconds. And that at one point they, they would go into the water and then they'd see them come out and, and like, so they, they see it's off of um, off the coast off of Catalina Island and they see these all the time. I know uh, Catalina, Catalina wine Catalina mixer. Wine mixer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where, that that's off of, that's off of California, right? Though yeah. I don't yeah. know where. Oh oh, I know San Diego. Yeah yeah yeah. Um, and we also have huge naval bases there. We sure do. Which is also like oh my god, and we probably got nukes around there. Probably. Probably. Well, well we, have, mean, we have nukes on the submarines and right, stuff. Right, oh, yeah. Right. And there's there's incidents where they've, they've seen them tracking nuclear-powered subs as well. So so I was actually going to ask you about that. I That's a thing? Oh, yeah. Like, because you would, you would think if these things are over the water, we would we would have warships and stuff that would see them. But I'd never, I didn't know if they would, act, like, so there are there are reports of them tracking nuclear subs. Oh, yeah. Yep. Really? Like, yeah. recent? Yeah. So it's, uh, pro- I'm sure, yeah. Um, but yeah, anything anything nuclear powered, we seem to see a connection of some kind there. Um, it's very strange. They seem very interested in our nuclear capability, um, whether it's weaponized or, you know. That's interesting that it's even if it's not weaponized, like as a power source, I guess a nuclear reactor is, ba- is still a nuke. Right. It's just thing could go off. Could you know? go off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Because I I had not personally actually heard about those like report like for instance like are they over our nuclear power plants? I, ha, I have, have there been reports of that? I believe so. Yeah. Now I haven't dug into that nearly as much, um, just because I think 
the idea that they're above our nuclear silos is pretty fascinating. Yes. And that, um, well, even more so they're turning off our nukes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You know, like if I'm the head of the DOD, I'm like, let's spend some money <laughs> figuring that out. You just got to go back to basics, light a fuse. Yeah. Yeah. Carrier pigeons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was, um, I, I did want to bring some information about um, okay. China though. And obviously like China, you know, they're pretty locked down in terms of what information we get out of there. Uh, but, What's interesting is I think last time I was on we talked about the um, O'Hare, uh, the airport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So the Chicago and, Airport one, yeah. And why why, is, why don't people talk about that? That had tons of witnesses. Mm -hmm. When was that? Not that long ago. Will um, you recap that really quickly for the people listening? Yeah. So there was, um, I believe, if, if memory serves, there was an aircraft. There was a plane coming in, and some pilots saw this disc-shaped object that was hovering above the airport kind of on the cloud line and um, just like nope <laughs> exactly <laughs> like uh oh um and so they're like there's there's actually recordings of them kind of going back and forth with the control tower and the control tower where they were sitting couldn't see it at the time and they're like uh what and so they're asking for other people to try to check it out or whatever mm -hmm. and so there were multiple uh witnesses to this and it created like kind of a hole shape in the uh, in the cloud, when it disappeared, it kind of hovered for a while, I guess, and then just kind of took off. But um, the pilots were concerned because they reported it up. They're like, "All right, look, we know this sounds crazy, but mm -hmm. this thing is right there, and like this could be a safety concern. Yeah, We've got yeah, planes yeah. coming in and out, like." And they felt like it didn't. Nobody took it seriously. <clears throat> so by contrast, in 2010, um, in um, I'm going to try to pronounce this correctly, Shaoshan Airport. This is in China. Yeah, in uh, Hang Hang Hangzhou, I think is the name of the city, China. Um, Chinese authorities shut down an entire airport. Really, Whoa. in 2010? Yeah, I've 2010. never heard this story. So it it happened July 7th, 2010, and I believe it was around 8:40 p.m. But at air traffic controllers, kind of a similar thing, were informed by a flight crew. So another plane getting ready to land, and they're like, "Hey, there's a UFO hovering above the airport." And air traffic controllers then confirmed the sighting. They grounded all the flights, delayed all takeoffs, and actually diverted incoming flights uh, for, I believe, it was at least an hour. Are there any pictures of this? I didn't see any. Um, see, in the like, book that it's <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess on. in 2010, camera phones weren't yeah, ubiquitous. But, yeah, but China still had the best camera phones at the time. Yeah, that's true. Did they? They Whoa. do make camera phones, right? Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. 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 I'd never heard about that one. I hadn't either. Are there, and we don't have to get into it, but are there a lot of these airport incidents to your knowledge? That is um, only the second major airport one that I've read about. Now, there could be there could be more, but it's just interesting because of the way that, that the one that occurred at, at O'Hare in the United States, just the way that it Wait, was handled. Is that real? I don't know. That's what I was trying to figure out. Um, I can show this, but. Put it on the screen. There you go. What is it? It looks like a shooting star. Oh, wow. Weird. This was supposed to be about the China. Oh, maybe they do have pictures. Yeah, they have the Huawei's. But, like, they took it seriously. They were like, uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to figure out what this is, whereas our, our airport's just like, oh, carry on. It's interesting <laughs> to think that other countries might know more about these things than we do. Or at least acknowledge it. Like We're, like, we're, we're, not, we're acknowledging them now. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's actually, it is, it is cool also to think, like, all these people in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s who are talking about UFOs, like they're totally vindicated now. Yeah. You know, like good for them because uh, yeah. they were laughed at. People's lives probably got really messed up by saying I saw these UFOs. And now the government's like, yeah, they they exist. So I like good for those people. Well, even even more recently, one of the guys who was uh, uh, on the Nimitz, mm -hmm. uh, I, th I believe his name was Kevin Day. Uh, he was an officer aboard. And he like was was pushing this, and he was a career military guy. He was like, I was going to retire in the military, all this stuff. And coming out about this, like, completely ruined his career. Really, he lost his marriage, like, lost his career. So, like, in some of the documentaries, there's a documentary I recently interviewed um, for the from the Void podcast uh, named um, Shout out to from the Void podcast. Yes, yeah, Caroline out. Corey, Caroline Corey, documentary filmmaker. There's a great documentary that she made called "Tear in the Sky," and um, on it she gets all the military guys from the Nimitz. And he's one of them. And like the guy is like legitimately just really? destroyed. He's just sobbing. He's like, he's like, I feel like finally now that other people are coming forward. He's like, now I feel like, you know, like it's, it's vindicated him. Yeah. He's like, I'm not crazy. Yeah. This is what I saw. And there's all these other guys who are on board who are like, yeah, we saw it too. 
What 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 personally, let's say tomorrow the US government was like aliens exist. What are you doing? Oh man. <laughs> I have so many questions at that point. But like you're not going to get like are you what are you doing? Like I'm buying more ammunition. <laughs> <laughs> I might buy a weapon for the first time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Andy and I might be going gun shopping. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm probably pulling some money out of the bank. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I'd never I never actually thought about like okay, let's say all right, we like we've encountered a race. We don't know what they are. Yeah, I'm this just is what gonna, these things are. What just, what are you doing? I'm just gonna live my life. You're not going to work. Yeah, I am. <laughs> of course I am. Well. Financial sector would be quite quite crazy yeah. that day. No, <laughs> money, some, laundering, money laundering be through the roof. There, there'd be some uh, there'd be some good op- future career opportunities. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would join do Space you Force. Yeah, I'd join Space Force. <laughs> Could try and contact them. Yeah, shoot some IBMs up there. ICBMs up there. <laughs> Take our ARs out in the woods. And just <laughs> shoot them. Up. Come on. <laughs> I think it depends on what we find out, though, right? Like, if if the, if the government comes do you, out, do you tomorrow, think that's what they would do, or do you think something would happen and they'd be like, "Hey, you know, they they collided with our with a plane," or like, or do you think they would just be like, "Hey, it's aliens"? I think if they did that, they would have to come out with it in 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 a way where they're like, "We've already made contact. They're cool," <laughs> you know, yeah. like. So they're, not, they're not. They're not going to say like aliens are here and they're going to yeah. kill us all. So, so, right. They're yeah. not going to say that. We don't that. know what they're up to, yeah, you guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? That's that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. No, see, that's he, a good point. Here's what would happen: is for two weeks, everybody would be in an uproar, and then everybody just get like, nobody would their care. Capitalistic uh, life. Kanye's right. saying yeah. racist <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Go back. But to that, Paul that's a good be point. Like, How do I buy a ride? That's a good point, though. They would only tell us they were aliens if it was like they're cool. Like if yeah. it was like they're aliens, we don't know what they're doing. They wouldn't say that. Well, then it'd no. be like because that would crash. That would crash the economy as well. well then absolutely. It'd be, then it'd be Independence Day. Yeah, everybody have to unite. We're gearing up. Yeah, we're gearing up. Because <laughs> the U.S. has been the strongest get Randy military Quaid. power. Yeah, get Randy Quaid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's been like, he's wearing a clean one. <laughs> well, I told you guys, <laughs> somebody yeah. clean him up. Yeah. <laughs> Put him in rehab. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I, I think uh, yeah, I think. We've been the, the strongest military power in the world right. for, for the longest time. And so there's no way we're going to come in and say, hey, there's there's somebody that's got better toys. Yeah, than us. that's true. You know? Unless we have some sort of alliance with them and they're like, hey, we're trading technology and they're really cool. and they're That gonna, would be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Then we're the powerhouse. Like, sorry, China. <laughs> yeah, you, you guys can't do shit now. Yeah, you keep your iPhones. We got, we got, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> keep your iPhones. We, we got, got aliens. telepathy <laughs> now. We don't need iPhones. Yeah. It is, it's also interesting to think about like um, maybe like like we've found alien technology and it's made our way, it made its way into like, like, you know what I mean? These like big, like yeah. it was like the microwave or like they say these things. Lasers. Are like, yeah. yeah. Like, so like the, or the fusion reaction that just happened. I know that's cool stuff. That's right. That just that came out. Cool. Right? Well, I was like, maybe there are there UFOs over there trying to like, be like, okay. They're like, Hey, Hey guys, before you destroy your planet, like just, do it a, this a, way. A plus B equals C. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Do it this way. Give it a 20. Invest but what, in it. what would be their incentive to do that? But once again, I'm thinking like a human. Steal our resources in the future before we destroy it all. But like, yeah. I, obviously, yeah. if they have the technology to come here and do all this stuff, they could take, they could just dominate us. Maybe. Yeah. You know? That's true. Uh, unless they're allergic to oxygen. Yeah. <laughs> or water. Yeah. Or water. Or, <laughs> God, or, that movie sucked. It was a good movie up until that point. Because, yeah. like, the water, like, the the air is, like, 50% water. So, like, you know, that was a plot hole. Yeah. But it was still a good movie. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was freaky as hell. Contact was a great movie. Have you Contact was that's, stupid. That's my wife's One of my favorites. That's Contact. my wife's favorite oh, movie. Yeah. Yeah. That movie. What, but what was the... What was the the background there, like it was like a, a signal, like a radio signal that was alien. Is that that's, what it was? That's how they discovered it. Yeah. But then we had actually actual aliens. I don't remember that movie well, that the much. The signal created blueprints to create the device that would allow them to travel to meet the aliens. And Matthew McConaughey went? No, Jodie Foster went. Jodie Foster. Yeah. Spoiler alert. And the aliens, <laughs> aliens were her family, weren't they? She like projected them as her family or something like that? They projected themselves as her father to make her like more comfortable. Ah. Uh, oh, South good Park. Too. <laughs> it's a good That's movie. Smart. It doesn't sound like it when you describe it. <laughs> aliens. <Ed. laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. I just, I, I'm a, in agreement with you of like, there, why would they openly admit that UFOs are happening? Like, why would they do that? Yeah, I think I think they don't do likely, they don't do anything 
for random I'll, reasons. I'll tell you why they would do it. Why? For the military industrial complex. Oh, like, oh, oh, to get, oh, to to get, get some money. Yeah. That's Any actually a pretty invention, good point. How can, we, what, how can we weaponize That's it? a pretty good point. Yeah. Oh, Allie just destroyed our video feed. Really okay. Sorry. All right. Uh, I, I don't know if that doing that will repair <laughs> it. I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. I'll fix it. <laughs> you guys your... keep talking. Okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, so sorry. I think in all likelihood, I think all the governments are secretly, quietly trying to be the first ones to get their hands on this technology. If, if in fact it's alien. Well, yeah. I don't know. I have mixed feelings over it. Because whoever, whoever, whoever comes up, or whoever, because why would everybody be united in not talking about it? Because whoever gets it first is the winner. That's true. Yeah. So if we get it first. I mean, it's world domination. If China gets a first world domination, if Russia gets a first world domination, like I think we're all quietly racing to be the first. Wouldn't that be hilarious? If, if you think Russia. we're you think we're the good guys? Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> we're the new Rome. Man. We're the new Rome, man. Yeah, 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 <laughs> we really yeah, are. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, right. we, we lost our good guy status a while ago. I never consider the fact that maybe China has more intel on these than us. It's I never totally consider possible. that. It's totally possible. You know, I mean, think 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 about who invents all like the best technology, microphones and iPhones, and didn't all Hitler that invite the invent the microphone like Kanye <laughs> just said? I thought it was highways. Is, is uh, there no, highways um, a microphone? Is, yeah. is there is is there like like I know that like the Nazis did a bunch of weird occult stuff. Did uh, they do stuff about UFOs? They did. Yeah, they had a they had a program. Um, they had a. A craft that they were trying to work on called the Nazi bell. <laughs> okay. And it was shaped. Did it look like a bell? Was it this giant swastika? It did. <laughs> the flying swastika. Wow. Hold on. So, pull, uh, uh, Google Nazi It's not bell. aerodynamic, sir. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. Adolf, yeah. fly it. <laughs> Von Braun. Like it's, it's not, it's not going to work. Yeah, okay, you got to see this thing. It's so cool. Get the Nazi looking. bell up there. What a, which? Oh, it's got a swastika on it. Careful. Uh, <laughs> yeah, easy. Easy. <laughs> okay, maybe don't No swastikas um, on the live stream. It's supposed to be like an aircraft. Okay. That's yeah. actually a bell. <laughs> I don't know. A big old it's Nazi like bell. A literal bell with a swastika on it. Do not show that. Look at the, the what's the one on the bottom left that looks like a donut? It looked kind of like that. that. Yeah, it looked kind of like, sort of like that. So Hold try a um, Nazi UFO program. Yeah, okay. There's something there on the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. MG42. But so they were, they, so, so they were working they, on They something. were actually, because I knew they were into some like weird stuff. Oh, God, yes. Oh. Okay. They were in all sorts of cool weirdness. Okay. This is the image search. Let's, this is the one. Okay, yeah, that, <laughs> that, that looks like a donut. It's like a little dude sitting yeah. in the middle. Like, yeah. It's just like, hey, Adolf, it won't fly me. Other than, <laughs> other than this, ha, has there been, and like us talking about other countries, has there been, been a known widespread effort by another country to like look into this kind of stuff um i mean or just like sightings yeah there's there's like there have been a lot of like programs top secret programs within other government organizations the the, the people it seems to be the country that's like a little bit more honest and open about it is france france has a uh, really yeah i did not know that so yeah they have a program um that they publicly acknowledge that that was designed to study you really we have, I mean, we have one too that we have the public one. Like I said, we have the public one, and then probably the the kind of behind the scenes yeah, ones yeah, that yeah. are really doing. I work. hope there's a behind the scenes one. But they, the public one, they just released some information. I think last week uh, or recently, um, where they have a new because one of the big complaints by all these pilots was that there was no system in place to report any of these. Yeah. Things. So now they have a system in place to report these things, and apparently they're just getting inundated. Really, with reports. Yeah. So is um. Does France or mainland Europe in general have a history of UFO sightings or anything like that? Oh, yeah. They do. Um, Engl like British pilots, uh, like private pilots. There's also an interesting one, too. Um, the Rendlesham Forest incident um, is really interesting. I've never heard of this. So there's a couple um, British uh, air, air, like Air Force bases in uh, England that were... Uh, uh, I could be wrong, so if somebody's listening, you can correct me. What but, was the name of this? Uh, Rendlesham Forest. Rendlesham? Okay. And so there were U.S. bases there, and, and allegedly more information. Where, where, where is this? Great Britain? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. And so uh, 
more information is coming out now, but apparently we had a quite quite a large stockpile of nuclear weapons there. Of um, course, of course, you know. And of so, course. of course, there is a UFO sighting there that was witnessed that actually landed in the forest, and a ton of military personnel they they thought at first a plane crashed, and so they went out to investigate, and they see this thing in the sky. One of the officers who went up to it actually got burnt. Uh, like radiation burns? I don't know if it's radiation burns. He, I think he describes it as like steam. Okay. Like exhaust coming out and he gets burnt by it or whatever. But there's multiple officers there who still to this day um, talk about it. But very interesting. And, uh, you know. I'm just curious why France of all countries has a. <laughs> they're like, eh. They're not, <laughs> not worried about winning World Cups. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Oh man, dude, that was that might be the best World Cup final I've ever that seen. That was. I actually saw like I, I saw this hilarious TikTok where like if you have never watched soccer and this was the first game you've watched, prepare for disappointment. Like, never watch <laughs> another game. Although it's funny because like uh, this other tweet that was going around today was like for all the folks who are on the bandwagon of soccer is boring, like bad day for you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I also think you know. If there is a time when UFOs want to present themselves, the world, like literally everyone Landed in the, right in Qatar. everyone, <laughs> it's like literally like half of the world at a minimum is watching that game. Like oh yeah. Three billion people are watching. I'm like, that's when you do something. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. land right in the middle. Land in the middle of the field. Yeah. Say we're here. Bob yeah. Lazar was right. Yeah. You have some good. We're, good. He, we're here to harvest you guys yeah. <laughs> for, fu- for fuel. Buy some crypto advertising. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, it's come down. FTX. Yeah. Oh, There's man. capitalists. Uh, oh man, yeah, it's um, I don't know. It's like, what what is in like? So okay, so the 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 fighter pilot footage that I always think of is from like twenty what 2014, 2015. Is there really 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 recent stuff? I'm sure there oh, is. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. The, the, I haven't so the, seen it. Yeah, the two or three videos that were like the ones, the videos we watched, those are from like 2014, right? Like they're they're well, pretty old. 2004, I think. And oh, even older. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, and and those, by the way, I think if I remember correctly, were kind of pushed along. Um, uh, Christopher Mellon used to work uh, within the. Oh yes, he. It sounds like he found a loophole in the, um, uh, kind of the. I don't know how how they make them confidential or whatever. Uh, he found a loophole in a way that he was able to still kind of release them without, you know, kind of getting in massive trouble. He also, I've heard his podcast. I remember him saying specifically, like, we're, the really good stuff is being held back. Yeah. Yeah. I think he said there's like a 20 minute video. That's in like, and like pictures. Full color. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I want to see. So that why one. wouldn't right. they release that? I don't know. What's the logic behind releasing because like, they're like, okay, we're saying aliens or we're saying UFOs exist. Well, I think I think because this was leaked first. Yeah. No, okay, but let's just, so they release stuff they're like UFOs exist. Here's stuff. Why wouldn't they release the good stuff? Because maybe like why? I mean, honestly, why? I, uh, yeah, I don't of, know. Lots of theories. Yeah, it could be ours. We don't want to. We we, we want to hide. But it. if it was, if it's it true. was the U.S.'s stuff, you think they wouldn't say anything? Well, True. there's too much public pressure now. Yeah. And you got you got like high ranking congressional officials as well pushing Marco Rubio of all people. <laughs> I, know. I, know. I know. The Roots. Because <laughs> <Ruse. laughs> that's another thing. It's like, okay, you're saying UFOs exist. Great. So they're like, all right, just And here here's some evidence. No, but so we're not gonna show you the really good evidence. Yeah, so they're so why? Whoever's in charge of that is just like ah, just give them this stupid gimbal crap. Yeah. This is just the tip of But like why <laughs> wouldn't you give the good stuff unless the good stuff really proved it was aliens? I mean that's possible too, right? Like if you, yeah. if you had crystal clear footage and there's like a little alien sitting in the porthole window or whatever, it's yeah. like, hey, yeah. you know, you're like, we're not going to release that one. Yeah, yeah but I can't, not, I can't already. think of another reason why they yeah. wouldn't you know release what, the good stuff. You know, let's say they unless would. it was classified military technology even, that they even didn't it, want people. There's an American flag on the corner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> even if they, <laughs> whoops, <laughs> spirit of St. Louis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's say they released it and there's an alien in it. Nobody's going to believe it. That's true. If the U, if the Department of Defense said, and hey, there's an alien in the window, this waving. is an alien. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, like that's people, China trolling. That's people, a deep fake. <laughs> yeah, people would believe it. I don't. I don't know. I don't think so. I think I don't think you so. don't think so. No. I think the more fantastic it is, the harder that people 
the harder time people have like wrapping their brains around because they were brilliant with why these. would they lie with though? with this they're just like uh this is going really fast it's really weird we don't know what it is yeah but we have better pictures of it we're not going to show you because yeah. yeah. there's some you know there's some great alien documentaries out there where um they get kind of kind of <laughs> i don't kind of woo woo by the end where they're like well these these beings are a higher level of consciousness and so we found a way to communicate them with them through like uh you know uh um, meditation and all these things. And you're like, what? You know, but then like, it's entirely possible, but like it gets, the more woo woo it gets, the more, the more difficult it is, I think to, to believe. I think that's why a lot of people are like, I can get to UFOs, but like alien abductions, like that's kind of hard for me to, yeah, yeah it's a stretch. Yeah. And, it, it, and that's not even to say that none of that is possible or right. real, but it's like, I think people have a hard time with that. So I think, you know, we're, we're seeing bite-sized pieces. I think people are like, because I think now people are talking about it, right, in a way where you don't immediately start laughing. Yeah. Like, oh, you saw you. Right, right, right. And now all of a sudden you're starting to find out, like, friends that have seen <clears> weird <throat> shit in the sky. And you're like, why didn't you ever tell me that before? Yeah. Like, Nobody was going to believe me. Yeah. You know? So I think people are, like, opening up to it. So I think that's step one. And then step two, obviously, is I think as technology advances, like this um, Caroline Corey, uh, the filmmaker I just interviewed, she's like, look, she's like, I think disclosure is going to come from the people and not from the government. Because we're we're getting to the point now where technology is evolving in the public sector mm-hmm. so far yeah. that like we're gonna capture it and we're we're not even gonna need the government to tell us what we see because we've got the technology. I mean, they had this they have the software now. They have these high tech cameras that they just focus on the sky. And the software is programmed to identify any known object in the sky. So it can identify if it's Venus or Mars mm-hmm. you're looking at or a satellite. Or any kind of aircraft, and then if it's none of those things, then it's an identified flying object. Yeah. Not to say it's aliens or whatever, but it, it it's it's programmed to kind of determine what's identifiable. In and this is a so one thing I always think about is so we now have in terms of what the U.S. government is admitting, what a th- thousands of these reports, right? Oh. So there has to be. A lot of these things up in the sky, right? Lots. Yeah. Like hundreds. Yeah. You know, that's another thing. It's like, well, that's a little interesting. Because then it's like, okay, that's probably not our aircraft, like the U.S. ones. We yeah. wouldn't have hundreds <laughs> of them just like all over the world at any given time. Right. They're like, okay, if that's the case and there's just like at any given point in time, there's dozens, if not hundreds of these things around the earth, then they're really watching us. Yeah. You know, that's a little creepy. Well, here's they're abducting a, us and they're making human alien hybrids. <laughs> Let me pull this up real quick. What are you doing if aliens exist? You're buying more ammunition. No, I actually. <laughs> and I'm, he's like, I'm already stuck. <laughs> no, I'm just. You can always use more, John. This is true. This is true. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not panic buying anything. People are. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I'm, I'm are you just, just going to get up and go to work the next day? Absolutely. Aliens are real. Yeah. I'll get All right. In the break room, like, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. yeah. yeah I see that. <laughs> pretty, pretty crazy. Uh, the first thing we All do. Right, see you later. Yeah. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> no, the first thing Andy and I do is we get on our morning call. We say, we've been telling you guys yeah. for two yeah. years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, yeah, nobody listens. <laughs> um. No, there's a. Have you guys heard of the Drake equation? Are you familiar with this? I've heard of that. I don't no. know what it is, though. I know I've told you. Oh, yeah, it's like it. how many planets are out there, or what yes. is that? Okay. Earth like planets. Like it's it's literally statistically impossible that there isn't yes. life out there. Correct. Yeah. Right. Correct. And we're not even saying like human life. It could be a frog. Right, right, right. But like there's something out there. Like we've already, within the last year, they confirmed that there's a planet <laughs> with water on it. And that's just one. Um, one thing I love, Allie, can you. You pull this up. I love speaking of what you're talking about. I love the pictures of deep space yeah, where you the, see all of the galaxies. Oh, Cause when so they, pretty. when someone says it is very pretty, when someone's like, there are literally a hundred million galaxies. Yeah. That we can see that we can see. Yeah. And each galaxy has what? Five to 10 planets. So there are, there's infinite. Oh, more There's, than that. Right. More yeah. than that. So there yeah. are hundreds of millions of planets. Like that's yeah. a known fact. Yeah. And so even if point zero 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 one percent of them has life, that's yeah. still hundreds of planets. And even if point zero 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 one of those have advanced life, no, that's it's, still it's infinite. 
Well, that gets into a whole other. <laughs> no. It's a great Netflix. Yes, yeah, it's a great yeah. Netflix yeah. 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 documentary oh, if you on have that. A panic attack. That's yeah, a good dude. Oh. No. Allie couldn't. She couldn't do it. No. Yeah, she couldn't do it. I started to panic. Yeah. I got sweaty, and I was like, dude, oh, when, it's when too they big. say, when they say, and I was explaining the physics to her, like the 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 thing about the apple in the in the box. Yeah. I'm like I can't, like, but it makes no. total sense. Uh, no, there, there's oh. there are there infinite number of planets no, though. No, no, there's there's an infinite number of galaxies, and the galaxies and the wait, that's a thing. Yeah. Infinite number of galaxies. Yes, but it gets even crazier that than yeah. that, and the solar system is, is always expanding. I yeah. knew that because so I'm like, well, what's on the outside? So if <laughs> yeah, yeah, she can't do the it. Universe, <laughs> the universe is infinitely expanding yeah. at light speed outwards. Yeah. So we don't know where Something's the edge is. Something's on the outside. It's a right. simulation. <laughs> <laughs> there is no outside. It doesn't exist. Right. It's but, something's got to be outside. I, but the Drake equation. Right? Here's what the Drake equation says. But, but, yeah. Hold on. If there's, oh, yeah, a, if there's an infinite number of galaxies, then there is an infinite number of planets that could support. Right. Them. I want to go yeah. back to your comment about the Drake equation. So the Drake You're equation, not wrong. The, the, the Drake equation actually supports exactly what you just said, which is <clears throat> that um, within. So the Drake equation basically says that within the Milky Way galaxy alone, there's roughly the equation is something like 20 billion Earth-like planets. Wait, what? Well, Just okay. in I our galaxy? I hadn't heard, I hadn't heard yeah. that. No, wait. Yeah. No. So think about it. There's, there are, like, I thought our galaxy had like ten planets. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Not our galaxy. So wait, what? Dude, so what? What's our, us? Our, our solar system. So has, we're a solar system. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then the galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, which is a galaxy amongst right. billions of galaxies. Right. You know, in the universe. Oh. And so. Uh, you expand that out to the visible universe, just what we can see with our current technology. It's like 20 billion trillion. Wait, I didn't know the number was that high. Yeah, it's real high. I knew it was like hundreds of millions, but you're saying just what we can observe is like the observable in, universe. In eff effectively infinite? Yeah. So, see, what, what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> Well, and then to, what's to happening? take Andy's yeah. point even further. No, and that's why, that's why you can, you can, statistically, you like, the chances of aliens versus time traveling humans are the same. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Or time traveling aliens. Yes. Yes. It's all the same. Or, or a frog. You know, I, I, a spaceship. <laughs> you know, I, didn't, I didn't think maybe it's aliens that are time traveling. Yes. I didn't yeah. put both of them together. Yeah. It's totally possible. Yeah. Well, then you look at, you look at some of the uh, hypo, uh, hypothetical theories. Um, like string theory and the fact that like Star Wars might be that's happening. All that, dude, that's we're getting into quantum physics. Yeah. That's yeah. like crazy no, no, shit. No, well, but, here's, but here's but one. It's, it's statistically more possible than impossible that Star Wars is existing somewhere. That's true. I can't even unpack <laughs> that's true. that. <laughs> I know. You need to watch the Infinity documentary on Netflix. <laughs> Have you guys seen Cosmos, the new one with uh, Neil No, Neil I Neil haven't. Tyson? Is it good? Right. It's so good. Yeah, watch the first episode alone is worth it because they basically put he puts uh, all of like creation of the universe or whatever on this thirty day calendar. Yeah, and we're like human creation or whatever uh, human evolution, whatever you want to call it, is like the last five minutes of the last day of yeah the, whatever. But um, he goes into they go into and they they do a really good job with these really like amazing animations that kind of like visually kind of showing you what he's talking about. So they talk about this idea of the multiverse. Mm -hmm. And so one of the theories... That's like real, right? Haven't we proven that that's real? Not yet, because one of the theories is that... Um, so they've now proven that the theory, I think, back in the 80s was that there's a black hole at the center of every galaxy, right? So they have proven that? They have proven okay. that, yeah. So at the center of the Milky Way, there's a black hole. Uh, what they don't know is what happens within the black hole. They think that, like... That's like know, the event horizon, ripped right? apart. Yeah. yeah. But one of the theories is that if you entered into a black hole, that you would come out the other side in a whole nother universe and on and on and on and on. So they represent it in this animation thing where it's just like bubbles and it just keeps going out in, to infinity. And so it's, see, so you're I mean, sitting there like, now I'm like, oh my God, we're so small. We're in a simulation, right? We gotta be. Then we're like, statistically, <laughs> it's just as probable as anything else. <laughs> Time traveling frog aliens. <laughs> That's what you think. Okay, like this is like when you think about the. I didn't realize the Milky Way had hundreds of millions of of planets or ga no planets. This planets, could yeah. be the Matrix. Yeah. Well, I mean, think about it. We've got what everything. We, we nothing's real. We fired, yeah, I know. <laughs> we fired Pluto. So what are we down to? I know we're yeah. down to eight. Eight. Okay, so we have eight just in our solar system. Solar system. Right. But then there's like, you know, hundreds of thousands of other stars out there that have. Anywhere between, you know, one or a couple planets and 
a ton, you know? And so like you just, and what, what you have to look for, what they look for though is what they call the Goldilocks zone. It's this like perfect <clears throat> distance like, between the stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where like, you know, and, and of course like, you know, certain elements like yeah. the ability to create an atmosphere and stuff like that. So I'm also fascinated with like terraforming Mars. I think that's the way to go. Don't we like nuke it or something? Is yeah. that a thing? We basically do what we're doing right now to murder our planet. We do that there <laughs> and it helps to melt some of the ice caps. Mars like see, we, was see, Earth-like see, right a while ago. We could, Dude, I would, the, the Earth could rally around I, a, a plan to just nuke Mars. I, yeah. I, <laughs> I tell you, I tell you, I went on. This is, this is not. This is, this is not really related to nuking Mars, but somewhat related. I went on a tangent the other day because I was like, "What is powering the Earth's core?" I, do you know I, this? I, yeah, I, I, I guess it's just heat so, magic. Just yeah, but it's it's from, le- a lot of it is leftover heat from the Big Bang, and then I went on a tangent yeah. on the Big Bang. Have you heard Big Bang? What? what what is there to hear? You can hear it? Oh, yeah. Like they have sound waves from it? Yeah. What? Pull, pull, what? pull that shit wait, up. Yeah. Wait, how? It is. Wait, wait how? Prepare yourself because it is It is the sound of nightmares. Wait, wait, they, wait, wait. wait. Yeah. How do they have this? It's creepy. I don't know how they did it. I just remember. Uh, Vet this, Allie. Wait, reading an article. It's gonna, it'll just play. Will it? Okay. It, it, uh, oh, I'm so excited. If you can unmute it. Wait, how do you get the sound? I don't understand. How do they get the sound from the Big Bang? It's like, I don't remember how they did it exactly. Okay. She should pull it up and should be able well, to speak to it better than I you would. Could, is the sound playing? No, how do I get the sound to play? Hit play. Well, I've been playing videos. Oh. Hit, uh, you got to unmute. The computer is muted. And I feel like this is just a technological <laughs> thing to get you to unmute I the computer. I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's an excellent job. How do they get, is this real? Yeah, this is real. How do they get the sound waves from the Big Bang? So, um, okay. Why? It's just like the no, game Asteroids. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not it. It's <laughs> not it? No. No, this is like a MIDI file from, <laughs> <laughs> from like the 80s. Is this it? No. No. Really? No, it's, this, it this sounds like legit. Uh, it sounds. Sound why does this seem legit? Yeah. I don't know the video. <laughs> I mean, it looks like it looks legit, but I swear it was like the one I heard. I thought was it sounded more like like um I don't know like almost like white noise of some kind. It so really I, kind of I get that the sound produced from that is still out there. Yeah. And so the, somehow they were able to record um, that. This is a white noise. This is a white noise machine. This doesn't sound particularly nightmarish. Yes. Yeah. Turn off all ads. <laughs> yeah. Is that is that not right? But <clears throat> I didn't realize. So four and a half billion years ago, that was the Big Bang. Well, right. It, it, as long as you're not an evangelical Christian. Correct. I guess. <laughs> but is is it also Sorry. surmised that all galaxies were created at that time? Yeah. So it was like this outward explosion, and all these gases and materials basically through gravity basically they can stars right and yeah and, and i didn't realize that the leftover heat from that big bang is part of what's powering our core yeah because i was like you know we have a magnetosphere we have an atmosphere like all that takes energy where's that coming from and it's coming from the big bang and the i was like well what's what is powering the earth what is it and it's leftover heat yeah so the 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 earth when the big bang formed was like super hot and it's slowly cooling and like it's still hot from that slow cooling process and it's just it's just in the center now it's where the outer layers are good insulator correct yeah yeah yeah. but it's still like the earth will die at some point you know because it will cool all the way down well, it, well, before that happens, most likely we'll get burnt to a crisp because our star right. will, will turn into a red giant <clears throat> and then and yeah. eventually die. It's like it's like millions of years from now. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Not it doesn't, doesn't, yeah. <laughs> doesn't matter. We'll but kill ourselves. The human race will kill itself well before this. Oh, happens. God, yes. <laughs> God, yes. We'll be, we'll be Mars 2.0. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be living on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, God. Yeah. Oh, well, billionaires. Be living on Mars. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Could be uh, Matt Damon. Mars used to be like a... Uh, earth like planet right that's the theory yeah there's there's dried like water beds and um river beds but wait is there ice on mars yes on the polar on ice the caps, poles yeah. yep and okay. there used to be rivers yeah oh yeah like, yeah let's nuke it yeah yeah, yeah. right that makes sense <laughs> yeah. so they think so the problem is that that <laughs> mars has no atmosphere so right it's really really hot and really cold so, oh north. so wait if you nuked it would all the 
water vapor just what go is the science space? behind nuking a planet to give it an atmosphere because <laughs> well, it seems counterintuitive yeah, yeah. i don't know if the nuke theory is the one that they were going to go with but i think they were going to put build large it's industrial so, <laughs> so american and human just launch a bunch of nukes at it <laughs> But blow it up, <laughs> blow it up. Yeah, but yeah, they they would essentially um, create an atmosphere through greenhouse the greenhouse effect. Okay, so they need to create an atmosphere first to kind of trap yeah trap regulate the stuff. temperature, and then melt enough of the polar ice caps to get the flow. Oh, of like water. Uh, water. Yeah. Okay. And then and you then, can and then give it a few into. million years. Yeah. Get, like, I was gonna going. say that takes like a long time. Yeah, yeah. we're talking generations. Um, before. Yeah. Let's start but it now. could be done. It could be done. Is, uh, do do people actually think these UFOs are from Mars? Well, to bring it back, <laughs> there are conspiracy theorists that are convinced that um, Martians are still living on Mars below the planet's surface, and that those same people yeah, also. How, are how do you rule, how do you, how do you rule that out though? That's true. That's true. I've heard That's the true. Martian thing, but yeah, I mean, it, there's like the panspermia thing. Like that kind of makes sense to me, but. I wouldn't think these crafts are from Mars. Some people like say that. Yeah. I, I don't know. Again, how do you rule it out? You can't. can't. It's true. It's yeah. Infinite possibilities. <laughs> There's one guy in his underwear in a uh, trailer in, uh, in the middle of nowhere. Does He's it, like, I told you. Okay, but doesn't, uh, so Lazar uh, claims it's from Alpha Centauri, right? I don't, I think, I think, I don't think that's like a firm thing for him. Like, I think when it comes to the alien bodies and, and like the theory in terms of where they came from, He's just kind of like, this is just what I heard, but I don't know. But he did. He, I'm not making that up, right? Like there was a specific yeah. location that he claims the the he, the yeah. people working on this project said they came from. Yes. So if he is, if we were to assume he is correct about the other things, we could assume that what he heard was correct, and wasn't it like Alpha Centauri or something. Yeah, Alpha Centauri and um, the Pleiades star system or something like that is the other one that I always hear. But I mean. At that point, we're like, uh, I don't know. Right. It doesn't yeah. matter. Um, <laughs> all right. Interesting, though. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is there any other things we didn't cover that you would like to cover from your notes? Um, the big one I thought was interesting this time to talk about, like I said, was the, um, uh, the the nuclear facilities. Just because, like, we're dealing with, like, military officials who are credible witnesses yeah. and um, who are... In, in a lot of instances, putting their careers on the line to come out, come forward and, and talk about this stuff. And so I think I think that's really intriguing. And also the fact that obviously they're just kind of toying with our technology. What what do you think is this? I think I asked you this last time, actually. But what do you think is like the sole most credible report or person currently? Do you think it's the pilots or something like that? It's got to be the pilots. Yeah. Fravor and Graves um, seem pretty legit. And, and like you see some of these other guys like the um, the technicians aboard the aircraft who are like who are essentially tracking all these air, you know, these objects or whatever. Um, all seem like really credible witnesses too. like you see interviews with them. And these dudes are like not guys who necessarily want to talk about it. And when they do, they're, they're highly emotional. And mm -hmm. so um it kind of lends to the, you know, not that there aren't good actors out there, right? But like these guys don't seem like the type who are like, right. And like, why? Why would they make this up? Yeah, they're like not the making money off of it. His career, yeah, you know. And no civilian sources that you think are super good. I mean, I think there's some decent sources out like there. journalists, right? maybe. Oh, for sure, yeah. Um, commercial airline pilots are good sources. That's a good, I that's think. A good one. Um, and, and there's <clears> plenty that have seen strange things that they can't explain. Um. Yeah, I, I mean, there's even some reports though that there are former presidents that saw Jimmy Carter. Uh, Has have they talked about it or just like reports? Yeah, I think he mentioned it uh, briefly, and I know there's pre previous presidents who are fascinated. Clinton was really one who was like fascinated by it and actually asked. Really, and they were basically like, "No, we're not telling you." Hopefully, they didn't tell Trump anything or Biden. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want a good dis disinformation uh, campaign, just you know, tell the crazy guy. He's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I guess, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, sure. You know? Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, the whole thing is like super fascinating to me. And, you know, all, the most fascinating thing to me is that nobody seems to care. Yes. <laughs> like nobody Welcome seems to, to care. <laughs> that's like, my, like, you know, once again, if we went back to the 60s. Yeah. And we're like, and the government was like, the UFOs exist. Yeah. Here's pictures of them. Like the society would have been in an uproar. Nobody cares. Well, think about Betty and Barney Hill. Yeah. Um, they, they both <clears throat> passed away long before this all came about. And they were like, you know, went through this allegedly traumatic event. And they were, weren't they? It was an, abdu an abduction, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
and um, you know the, the uh, if you've ever heard it, and they're they're publicly available. The um, uh, audio tapes of them going through like this hypnosis uh, regression. You know, uh, it, it's just like Barney is just like screaming. It's so creepy. It's so terrifying. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, who knows? I mean, there's there's obviously some controversy with uh, hypnosis and stuff like that. But um, but it's it's interesting, you know, it's wild. Um, so, it's you know, above all else, regardless of what you think about this, it's fun to talk about. Yeah. You know, it is. It is. it's fun to talk about. It, it, it was fun even before. They admitted it. It was real. Yeah, now it's yeah. it's really fun because yeah. like it's it's real. We can go see the pictures and make make what you will of it. But clearly something is going on. Yeah, and you know maybe we'll know more at some point. But yeah, interesting times to be alive. You know. All right, sir. <laughs> Thank you for coming and talking to us. Almost two hours it goes fast. Holy cow! Yeah. Um. Just say uh, <clears throat> you got to say Britney Spears and Hot Ten. I know. <laughs> I gotta say Britney Spears and Hot Tent. Yeah. People are playing Kevin, is that on Bing, Kevin Bingo. bingo. Yeah. Yeah, that should be on the Britney Spears should be on Andy's bingo card. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? Right. She's, she's been you, spicy you lately. Said <laughs> Ukraine, Russia, firearms, Star Wars. <laughs> that's a good bingo card. Yeah, yeah, that's a good bingo card. That's funny. All right. Britney Spears, hot tent. Bingo. Uh, all right, Everybody sir. Drink. <laughs> thank you for coming and talking to us. Thanks for having me. Uh, thank you, Allie, for moderating. Yeah. Now you have to cl- click the end stream button up there, oh, and, and we'll see everybody later. Yeah, bye. Bye-bye. Bye bye. It's, it's big red. Oh, it's it's red, red button. Happy hundred. Happy hundred. <laughs> Happy hundred. All right. All right. Oh man.